things so uh, let us start uh, the contents of this presentation include uh, i will uh, give an overview about the purpose of lab reports why do we need to write a lab report then the structure of the lab report i'll give you some uh, examples uh, of course we'll discuss in detail the structure of the lab reports what do you need to write what are the components and then i'll show you some sample of the lab reports uh, last uh, i'll show you how are we going to grade your lab reports so basically you will have an idea about the expectations uh, that that we are looking or what we are looking for in the lab reports so first thing first what is the purpose of a lab report why do we need why do we need to write a lab report so lab reports are written to describe and analyze a laboratory experiment that explores a scientific concept for example in your lab you might be doing an experiment about studying the convective heat transfer or the comparison of convective and uh, radiative heat transfer so uh, there is there are some scientific principles involved we want to study for example at certain temperatures the radiation heat transfer is more significant as compared to the convective heat transfer coefficient and similarly uh, at certain uh, air velocities the convective or the forced convection becomes uh, more significant as compared to the uh, radiation so uh, the three main purposes if we summarize the purpose of lab reports the three main purpose of uh, lab reports are uh, you communicate exactly what occurred in the experiment by presenting the experimental data. Uh, you basi uh, basically, you record some experimental data, you have some variables and some uh, measurements. Okay. Uh, the next part is we discuss the results. So we get experimental data, we analyze that experimental data and obtain certain conclusions and then we provide those conclusions in the lab report. So we communicate the event or what exactly occurred in the experiment based on those experimental data we obtain some results by calculation and you using our theoretical knowledge and then based on that we provide the conclusion so technically a report is a form of a technical communication and uh, i think you should recall from your basic communication courses that there are five c's of communication number one is clarity you should be very clear okay you should not write ambiguous sentences uh, you should uh, report factual information uh, you should be concise okay uh, there is no need to write extra long sentences or uh, excessive information which may blur or which may cover the exact purpose or the fact factual information so therefore you should be concise uh, concreteness uh, concreteness here refers to the accuracy of your data and to the accuracy of your facts that you should present concrete information coherence coherence and context now coherence is uh, you should write your report in form of a story like you start with your raw data from the scratch and then you take the reader a step by step how you uh, derive some meaningful conclusion from the data for example you use some theoretical knowledge uh, let's say you have a uh, flow rate of cooling water and then first you use uh, the basic relationship of uh, mass and density to convert the uh, volumetric flow rate to mass flow rate and then you use the mass flow rate and the heat capacity in the energy balance equation to obtain the heat load by using q equal to mcp delta t and so and so so there must be coherence you take the data raw data and take the reader step by step through all your calculations okay in a coherent manner and at the end a reader should realize how if if the readers uh, if the reader is given that raw data by reading your report he should be able to calculate your uh, results okay and you should uh, never miss the context you should discuss it in the context of your objectives of the purpose of the experiment so you should keep this picture in your mind while writing your report uh, in the lab report essentially a lab report should have these parts now depending upon the instructor and uh, depending upon the other requirements there might be some changes but more or less they should the a lab report should have these components okay especially in 309 we are expecting your lab reports to have these components the first thing is the cover page or the title page then the abstract then the introduction and theory procedure results and the analysis and discussion of the results conclusion and recommendations uh, references and the raw data with the sample calculation as appendix 
So let us go through these one by one. So the cover page is the simplest part. It should contain the essential information like the title of experiment, your name, your group members, the name of the instructor, the date of the experiment that is performed, and the submission date or the due date, whatever is available to you. For example, here is the title page. Um, you can use a similar one or is, you should design your own. It's up to you, but it should contain these information. I took it from the 409 laboratory, but in your case, you are studying 309, so you should just change uh, 309 experiment, the course title, the experiment title here, the authors and the group, and all these information, <coughs> excuse me, should be uh, available on the cover page. Following the cover page uh, should be the abstract. Now, it's optional. You may include a table of contents if you would like to. So if you want to include a table of contents, it should be after the cover page. If you don't want to include a table of contents, then you just uh, follow the next page should have the abstract. Uh, now abstract, if you look at the reports like the one of the top things or one of the first uh, that is being read by the reader. However, uh, you'll see, you'll realize that it is written in the last. Why? Because it is like the executive summary of the work. And by reading the abstract, it's a short summary. The, the read, by reading the abstract, the reader should know that what did you do, how did you do it, and what did you obtain? Okay, what are your results, and what is the purpose or significance of these results? So, what did you do? This question, uh, it you should have a statement which signifies the purpose of the experiment like for example you should write a line like the purpose of this experiment is to study the effect of the airflow rate on convective heat transfer or the purpose of this experiment is to study the shell and tube exchanger and the effect of the uh, flow configuration either co-current or counter current on the performance of heat exchanger or any other uh, similar concise description of the experiment and the principles that involved the next part is how did you do it so you, here you need to provide a brief description of how the experiment was performed. Now, uh, you should be careful here. You should not write the detailed procedure. Some students, they write detailed procedure like we did this, we did that, and by No, you should write a very precise description like, uh, for example, the experiment was performed in a shell and tube exchanger, and we measured the inlet and outlet temperatures for the cooling water and for the for the cold fluid and the hot fluid okay at steady state you may add another two sentences about uh, the the cooling water flow rate was varied and each steady state we recorded such and such parameters okay that's enough any just a brief description so that the reader know what was the equipment that is used and how the experiment was performed the last uh, two or three lines should be about your results so you should present the most important result from your uh, uh, experiment okay in the abstract for example that overall uh, or in summary it was found that the uh, higher velocity will decrease the heating the heating elements temperature or it will uh, favor convective heat transfer something like this and what is this depending upon the type of the experiment uh, you may present some of the for example implications of the result or the lesson that you learned from that experiment okay but that depends on the experiment because some of the experiment you have only certain studies but in some of the experiment you have like a type of case studies so it depends on the experiment you may decide better uh, what to write here so uh, abstract is although it is the first component however uh, after uh, it is written after the all the other section are completed there is a typo here so however it is written after all the other sections are completed here are some examples uh, of the a good abstract and the next one is uh, like a poor abstract i took these uh, examples from uh, lab report guidelines which is available on the website of uh, Baylor's university it is for the physics department but i think it applies very well to our cases as well so look here we have an abstract uh, which says uh, it's about hooke's law and finding the constant about this the k value for the spring Okay, so it says two experiments were performed to find the spring constant of a steel spring. You see, we have we have, have a purpose here. It's written here. And now we have a methodology. The spring constant was determined statistically by measuring the elongation, its elongation when subjected 
when subjected to loading and dynamically by measuring the period of mass length from one end and set into vertical oscillation. So one sentence about methodology and then the results. The resulting values of this much and this much respectively. Our springs behavior followed Hooke's law. Now this is a conclusion to within the limits of accuracy of the two experiments. Around 70, uh, 80 words, 76 words to be exact. There, there is a little, you can, uh, you know, extend it a little bit more. Uh, personally, I think an abstract should be uh, around 150 to 200 words. So I think uh, I like the second one. It is also a good abstract. Uh, you see, we start with the purpose. The purpose of this experiment was to measure and compare the spring constant of steel spring using two different procedures. So it's, it gives a little bit of more details. Uh, first, we investigated the relationship between the force applied to a spring and then the displacement of the spring to its length uh, from its rest of length. We hung uh, various masses from the springs. Uh, now here, although it's a good abstract, but uh, you should try to avoid these pronouns as much as possible. Uh, we avoid the pronouns and we write it in the uh, passive or the passive voice because we want to focus on the uh, methodology itself. Okay. You may write that the various masses were hung from the spring and measure it and its vertical displacements were measured. It was found that a spring constant, uh, a spring constant of this much was found. Our results confirmed the Hooke's laws and so on. So, so this is 128 words. Uh, you may read it. Well, I'll share these slides with you and you may read it yourself. I'll also show you uh, some examples of the abstract from uh, our lab reports. Now, this is how a poor abstract looks like there are many other examples but just uh, you see first of all its length look the abstract uh, should be around 150 words okay now here it's uh, more and you can see that the lines in the the text in the blue color is uh, totally unnecessary like you see the purpose is there the experiment methodology is there the first two lines in the black that's good that's good however we don't need this, such a precise procedure like we hang masses of this much this much and all these details from a spring and recorded the vertical displacement we made four measurement for each mass so this information is unnecessary you should avoid it then here are some one or two lines about the result that looks okay but the blue ones uh, it's not needed and it should be discarded another thing in the abstract they should be careful about is you should provide the accurate or precise details and if for example if you're writing something uh, and you're comparing so you uh, let's say we say that the heat transfer coefficient was high now what does high mean here uh, higher to what compared to what so you should be uh, clear that for example the heat transfer coefficient in the counter current heat exchanger was found to be higher than what then co-current heat exchanger maybe uh, maybe heat transfer coefficient at lower uh, at higher flow rate was higher than the lower flow rate or something so you should always write uh, complete details about the sentence so for example it's an abstract from a biological experiment i believe the experiment was performed to determine the factors that positively influence the enzyme reaction rates in cellular activities why because since some exams seems to be more effective than others so since to be more effective if you don't write than others then the sentence is incomplete uh, it says since some enzymes seems to be more effective effective what uh, then other enzymes so it, it this then others completes the sentence similarly if we look at the methodology it says the uh, enzyme activity was measured through its absorption rate in a spectrometer using light with a wavelength of 540 nanometer so this is again some information that is required uh, Similarly, you can read it uh, like, for example, if you are reporting some values, you should report proper values like a rate of 95% as compared to a sample with the lowest concentration and an absorption rate of 24%. Similarly, if you look at the conclusive sentence, this suggests that the enzyme is most effective in a neutral pH ranging from 6 to 8. So following the abstract, the next part of the report is the introduction. Okay. The purpose of the introduction is to give the reader an overview of the importance of your experiment as well as the important theoretical background that is needed to understand the calculations and the data analysis. So the introduction states the objective or purpose of the experiment and provides the reader with important background and or theory to relate to the, ex related to the experiment. So in summary, the introduction should include the following, the importance of the process, 
uh, for example if it is it has an importance in the industry and real life application like if you have an experiment about heat exchanger you may write about the importance of the heat exchanger related to the energy conservation and of course it is used in the almost any of the process industry and you should uh, mention some real life applications uh, the theoretical background for that experiment now you will find the introduction and theory already available in your uh, lab manual however you are not allowed to copy paste this that, that should serve uh, you can use the equations and put a reference for that however for the importance of the process and the introduction you should do a little bit of literature survey and write your own uh, importance and the theoretical background so uh, the prompts for the writing the introduction you should write what kind of problem did you work on or what kind of experiment did you work on is a charity heat exchanger is a cross flow heat exchanger or is it a, uh, some conduction experiment something like this and why did you work on this problem because you want to study this 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 and uh, you have certain objectives and you want to study those and then what the reader should know about the experiment or understand if she's finished uh, when she's uh, finished reading the report so uh, this is uh, to give you to give an overview to the reader uh, about the experiment and its important theoretical knowledge the procedure and method uh, we need to report a brief account of what you did in the lab and what materials you used okay or what equipments you used and it should be write, uh, written in a chronological structure okay most importantly it should be in past tense and it you should include only what is necessary to recreate or reproduce the experiment you should not include you should include the enough details but not very uh, finite details so that there is excess of uh, unnecessary information and it may confuse the reader like for example in your lab manual the the procedure is very very detailed because we want you to perform the experiment however in the report you should not report all those details however you are supposed to a report just one paragraph or two paragraph about how you did the experiment what were the parameters that you measured and how many runs you did and so and so and you should uh, try to write uh, using third person pronoun to keep your focus on the subject as i explained earlier now after the procedure the next part is the results okay so the results now using your raw data that you obtained in the experiment you should do some calculations as as uh, in 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 the end of each experiment in your lab report there is a data analysis section and there are some requirements for the data analysis so you should do that step by step for each step and present the data sometimes you might need to plot the data sometimes you just need to tabulate it and sometimes you need to calculate certain things and compare it with the literature or theoretical values and calculate the relative error so in the result section you present the data and state in the verbal form as well as visual you explain the tables and if, for example table one shows the data that was measured in the experiment and uh, it contains the temperature of the inlet and outlet for the cooling water similarly for the uh, hot water and it also lists the flow rates of the cooling or some something like this and then you use the data to obtain certain things okay so you use send, uh, in addition to that you use sentence to draw attention to the key points in the graph and figure so if you have a graph for example you are plotting the uh, let's say the temperature difference or the surface temperature of the heater with respect to the air flow rate so you may notice that something uh, there is an increasing trend or there is a decreasing trend now you need to uh, write a few sentences about that and explain that there is a maximum there is a minimum and so and so most importantly you should number the tables and the figures and use appendix for the raw data or complex calculations so in summary you should show what are your results is the data presented uh, so results are clear logical and self-explanatory you should not just lump them together in one table and the reader is lost when he's reading any it is not clear what is what and what is the main point what are what ties the results together so uh, it shows that uh, for example uh, you, if you do it in a chronological uh, sense step by step you should uh, the, you should show that uh, for example in step one we calculated uh, quantity x and then we use that quantity to calculate another quantity and so and so okay and of course uh, you your results should eventually lead you to the objective of the experiment 
now using the results then you need to okay before we proceed so here is an example of uh, tables and figure so whenever you are presenting uh, data in a table the table should have a number it should have a heading it's explaining what does this table contain then each column should have its own heading if there are units you should put a unit in bracket or by a slash okay if there are footnotes you should put them here and it's preferable no it's preferable not to use the vertical lines but if you want to use that's fine uh, and you should use the same decimals for all data for example look if you are reporting here in two up to two decimals we are using two decimal for all and the numbers are well aligned okay if you are using figures so make sure that you plot them neatly okay and you have the titles for the x-axis for the y-axis of course if the units uh, you should write them in brackets or with a slash sign okay if there is any essential information you should write it here the number the numbering for the table you see it it's uh, for it's at the top of the table while for the figure it's below the figure similarly uh, you should uh, explain what this this figure says uh, if you have multiple data or multiple trends or graphs on a single graph then it is better to use symbols or colors to differentiate between them and you should have a legend which explain like for example the blue circles represent the time versus 4c time versus 27c and so and so okay so uh, also sometimes the student they submit a figures which like for example now the data starts at 50 and it goes until 200 or 240 something that's fine to show the figure 50 to 50 i don't want a figure which starts from 10 because there is no data at 10 it doesn't make sense and uh, it goes until 300 or y starts from 0 and goes until 900 no you should try to uh, make the graph as neat as possible and remove any extra spaces uh, that is that are unnecessary the next part of the report is the discussion of the results so this is section is uh, the most important part of your report okay and you should demonstrate that you don't not only uh, you know you should be able to demonstrate that you understand the experiment very well uh instead of just simply completing the report and and writing the data no you should be able to explain all the results and you should be able to analyze it and interpret it so this section is allocated the most marks so it is well worth your time investment okay and how you write the discussion basically you begin with a sentence or a paragraph that summarize your results okay and if you if you have anything which can support your uh, hypothesis or which for example if you have certain objectives and you achieve it you should write it in the start okay or you can just simply begin with a sentence or a paragraph summarizing the experimental data and the results okay a good proportion of your discussion should be devoted to explaining interpreting and justifying your findings you may have certain findings in your report you may find a trend of certain quantities that are increasing or they are decreasing so you should be able to justify those findings and this can involve repeating some of your theoretical concepts or models okay which you mentioned in the introduction and you should put more focus towards uh, you know towards uh, justifying those findings um you you also uh, need to explain for example if you, if you have uh, certain uh, outliers or you have a point um, certain deviation from the from the theoretical expectation you have a hypothesis for example you expect the temperature to increase with the heater uh, input power or with the with another quantity for example however in the experimental data you have an increasing trend with certain points uh, that are out uh, outside the increasing trend maybe they are showing decrease now you should uh, highlight those points and you should be able to present an explanation for those points also it is important uh, that uh, you may suggest an alternative explanation for some findings or you may also suggest uh, some limitations of the study and for example maybe we assume certain things and those assumptions are not true and they are not they are affecting our results so you can write here so in the last part of the discussion it is beneficial to mention any flaws that they, that are there in the study uh, for example maybe uh, some physical constraint with the system 
the sample size or uh, other characteristics if you think there are other disadvantages associated with the design of the study then it's a good idea to discuss these and you may also put your uh, recommendation uh, now you can put the, your comment uh, your recommendation either with it at the end of the discussion or you can put it later on with the conclusion so in the discussion part uh, in summary you should explain the results in details if there are any trends you should analyze them and interpret them in terms of theoretical knowledge as well as in terms of the uh, study itself uh, for example if there are uh, error your data is uh, your calculations uh, you uh, is not uh, you're not getting your expected values for example you should be able to provide reasons for that for example it could be due to the uh, it could be due to our assumption it could be due to the error in certain measurement or there could be any other explanation uh, that you think is feasible you should write it there and uh, then at the end you should write some recommendation if you want to further improve this study or if you think certain factors are not considered in these studies and you want them to be considered in future okay <clears throat> so in the discussion section in summary use the underlying theories to explain how you achieved your result as well as what they might imply include error any errors and how they may have affected your data note do not just report the results but analyze them this means discussing the trends shape of the graph any outlier implication of the data and comparison with known or theoretical values there are some examples of uh, discussion uh, i think it is better that i show them uh, at the end so or let let me show it to you so again i have two examples here let me open it if it is if i can open it yep so again this uh, is uh, i extracted these two pages from the same uh, report guideline that is for the bellers university i think and uh, it is for the physics department so you start your discussion by writing one to three sentences that are enough to introduce what was done or uh, the raw data and the important result like for example in part one a spring was hung vertically with a mass hanger attached to the lower end of the spring and so and so and then you uh, write another uh, so this is the explanation of the physics principle and then you write the uh, further detail in this configuration two equal opposite forces acted on the spring gravity directed downward and so on and so on. okay then you write the if you have any graphs you write their analysis like a graph of force versus magnitude of displacement result in the expected straight line uh, is shown in figure one if you if you have the graph in your results you can write here it's shown in figure one and the slope of this line is this much which agrees with the values found by the average value of the calculated spring constant uh similarly if you have any sources of error or something you should be able uh, you should uh, write them here and if they are affecting your results and to certain extent you should be able to explain them so uh, i have another file which is more related to us is here it is from uh, one of my previous students in uh, ch 409 and it's uh, from the experiment of uh, liquid liquid extraction so you see in the results he put the table one which was the uh, equilibrium data and it's available to us and you can notice you see the title the table similarly we have another table which is obtained from the experimental results and then we have a plot we, and look at the figure we have x uh, y axis uh, x axis and the operating line which is the orange one we have the graph legend and the equilibrium data on the blue line and then some calculations so the discussion start table one shows the equilibrium data for the isopropanol water system in weight fraction and mass ratios so you see we start with the raw data step by step the data was originally given in term of weight fraction and it was converted to mass ratios using equation 2.1 and 2.2 so where are equation 2.1 and 2.2 basically they should be in your introduction or theoretical background and you should number the equations or the tables or the figures so we can easily refer them now the reader if he doesn't know how to convert it he can read from here okay they use equation 2.1 he can refer back to equation 2.1 the mass ratios were used to draw the equilibrium line and uh, equilibrium data is given the raw data sheet provided in the appendices now we use the data in table one and then we, you are using the data in table two table two shows the inlet and the outlet mass ratios and waste fraction of each stream in the process 
and it explains the how this data was obtained basically this is our experimental data so he explained how was this obtained and how we use this data to convert the area under the curve to certain mass ratio and mass fraction and again we are referring to equation 2.3 and 2.4 then he refers to figure 1 which shows the equilibrium uh, make up the diagram for the system from the graph we obtain certain equilibrium stages right so we have uh, he explains how to obtain the equilibrium stages and then here down he explained so you see practically the number of stages are rounded up uh, most of the time for the industrial application as partial stages are impractical doing so will exceed the required values and thus guarantee attaining the set design targets uh, otherwise uh, will cause extraction process to fall short okay so he explains any for example he rounded off the numbers to the nearest higher value and he explains why why do we need to do that okay and the number of equilibrium stages is two as shown on the graph and this is now here it says since our column is not conventional tray column the number of stages found to symbolize equilibrium stages uh, equilibrium units okay the number of stages directly proportional to the efficiency now this is something he's come he's making a theory or he's using his theoretical knowledge uh, and if the if you have more stages we will have more separation so furthermore it was found that we have only two stages uh, in our calculations we found that the equipment consists of only two stages so we can get the idea that the, the separation will be less or relatively low he, he put this hypothesis and then he proves it from his results which is the case in this system as the weight fraction of the extracted increase only from 0 to 0 0.05 which is minor okay given that the system concentrated with an infinite uh, refinite weight fraction of 0 0.2024 so you see in the discussion section it's just it's not just merely reporting the numbers no it is coming up with a theory and trying to explain those number any we are getting a lower separation here and why is that lower separation is because we have less number of stages okay and he explains it here similarly he explains the table number three and calculating FD and FS and so and so and by this way he explains all the results so this is how you your uh, explanation should uh, uh, discussion part should look like following the discussion you should write the conclusion and the conclusions uh, basically is an opportunity to provide a new perspective on your experiment you should include a brief two to three sentence summary of the report <coughs> like uh, it was found that such and such quantity is increased or is affected by this variable and so and so you should offer recommendation or discuss future implication a conclusion are usually short in a student lab report and uh, state what you know as a result of the lab report and your findings there is no new calculation no new information in the report uh, in the conclusion basically it is based on whatever you have discussed previously and what are the important findings so to summarize the writing process for the lab report you it's it is preferable that you start with the methods and the results section because these are the information that is complete with you right at the start you have the data and the methods and you have the results that you will calculate based on the theoretical knowledge then connect your results and tell the readers how you got them or basically you just uh, brainstorm it right now and then connect your interpretation of the results discussion to scientific assumptions or principles and then connect what you set out to do introduction to what you found or for example set whatever your uh, result and discussion part and lead them to your uh, objective or conclusion the last part is the most important uh, in term of the in-text citation and the list of references you must quote any references that you have used in your uh, lab report so while before putting the list of reference you should cite them in the text okay so the text citation is necessary for the readers to know from where you took those information okay you should try to avoid the quotes as much as possible for example if you are reporting the polystyrene degradation temperature you can report it by the APS style like polystyrene thermally degrades at 740 degrees Celsius and in the bracket you put the source or you can put by numbering any for example polystyrene thermally degrades at 740 and then you put square bracket 1 as your reference and now reference 1 should be the source from where you got this information similarly 
if you obtain the value of thermal conductivity or the diffusivity or viscosity or anything the value of thermal conductivity was obtained from Perry's handbook and you put a reference so this is in text this is how you do it in uh, during uh, the discussion section or the introduction section you put the information and put the source and then at the end after the conclusion you put the list of references and you can use any standard style uh, you can you may search about Harvard style, Vancouver, elsewhere, any style that you're comfortable with, you can use it. Like for example, you can list a book by the authors followed by the title of the book. Okay, uh, if it is a chapter or it's from a book chapter, you put the title of the chapter and then the book and then the publisher and then the pages. If it is a manual, you can write the title or the department and then the pages. If it is a journal paper, then you can write the author name followed by the title followed by the journal and so and so if it's a website you write the title then the link and then the date on which you access uh, that website and in the appendix you should put the raw data that is signed by the instructor the sample calculation preferably handwritten and you should attach a neatly scanned copy this is the grading form that we will use to grade your report and you can see here uh, you have to have a cover page and there is one point for that then in the abstract we will look if you have mentioned the objective methodology the results or the main conclusion and of course it, there should be cohesion and you should use uh, correct grammar so this is how we grade it then in the introduction we look for the importance of the process the theoretical background procedure and again the grammatical corrections and there are uh, one point for the cover page, uh, four points for the abstract, three points for the th introduction, and a procedure should be here also. Then the results, the required results, three points, then the interpretation, then the linking the uh, results be between results and objective, explanation, all of this constitutes around nine marks. Then the conclusion for three marks, if you have sources of error. Uh, the sign raw data sheet, you should have, you must have it. If you did not attach the raw data sheet, uh, we will not accept that report. And sample calculations, uh, you have five marks. Then we have a section for neatness and organization. You should have the text should be properly aligned. The paragraph should be uh, organized and numbered. For example, the numbering starts from introduction. You put one in dot introduction, then 1.1 theory, 1.2 procedure, for example, two results, and then 2.1 discussion, and then three conclusion, and so Okay. Uh, page numbering should be there the table and figure should be numbered you should be careful about significant figures and uh, other general formatting the, the font size and the fonts and all these things so this is the grading sheet and at the end i have a sample report so this is the sample report of che409 uh, we downloaded from the turnitin you should be careful about this as well we are uh, we are checking all the reports for any similarity or plagiarism and you know the kfpm policy for the plagiarism and uh, con um, other things i think it's already available on the blackboard and you should uh, see it so this is a cover page then we have the abstract here and you can see the abstract immiscible liquid liquid extraction is an important process and the objective of this experiment is to investigate such and such process and then the th the methodology in one or two lines and then the important results the number of stages and the value of heat trans the sorry the mass transfer coefficient and so on and so on. then we have the introduction After the introduction, uh, you see we have the equations. So all the equations have their numbers. You can uh, number them from the left or you can number them from the right. Look, okay. we have the page numbers, all the other equations. Then the results section. I think I showed it to you already. We have the tables, all the results, and the explanation of all these results. Then we have the conclusion to some of this experiment, and so on and so after the conclusion although this con these conclusions are lengthy you should be precise we have the sample calculation so you can do it on your hand and just uh, scan the copy but look it should be a neat and clean picture so here we have it and this is the raw data okay so we have the raw data here and the date uh, it is signed by the instructor and it should it. if you have any other uh, raw data sometimes it's more pages sometimes it's a few pages you just attach them 
okay so that's all about the report writing okay let me know if you have any questions uh, of course uh, i would like to acknowledge uh, many resources that i used uh, for making this presentation uh, thanks to all of them thank you all